Hey everybody, Pete Meyer, Motor Age Magazine here with another edition of In the Workshop. Uh, not too long ago, it was my pleasure to have Bill McKnight from Mala Aftermark. He's the team leader for training and uh, had some really good information to share and we really didn't have enough time to get everything that he had. So, hey, he's coming back to share some more information with us. So let's welcome Bill McKnight. Bill, how you doing? I'm doing good, Pete, and thanks for having me on again. No, I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us and you know, share the information that I know you have. You know, a lot of guys are watching your stuff on YouTube and now on Facebook and you know the tips that you guys have been putting out and that especially that young lady that's been helping you out there, taking some of the... Yeah, I like the car girl. She's my yeah. favorite person because she takes some of the load off. <laughs> but she's a little nicer to look at than I am. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just start off first, Bill. For those of, uh, of us who are watching that aren't familiar with Mala and Mala Aftermarket, why don't you tell us a little bit about the company first? Sure, Mala or Mali, either way. It, it is a uh, German company, German foundation, if you will. Annual sales in U.S. dollars of around 13 billion in U.S. sales, uh, right. that's about 12 billion euro, and it started as a piston company and has grown into a worldwide supplier of parts for the automotive industry, primarily engine oriented. Although now fluid systems and some other parts fall into that category as well. We also bought, as you might know, about a year ago, controlling interest in Bayer, a German manufacturer of thermostats radiators and other cooling system products. So Molly continues to grow that business. Now out of that 12 billion or so euros that we mentioned, about 2 billion of that is aftermarket sales worldwide. Mm -hmm. And we're the arm of the Molly aftermarket worldwide folks for North America. So we sell filters, turbochargers, thermostats, gaskets, bearings, rings, uh, pistons, and just about any other internal engine parts you can think of for all of Mali, North America. Yeah, and I guess I should point out too that, you know, Mali has been around for a long time. They're a, a huge OEM supplier. Right? Oh, enormous. Matter of fact, I'm getting ready when we finish here to go train our new hires for the month. And one of the things I tell them is half the vehicles in the world, engines at least, have Mali parts in them. Any given day, any given month, half the world's production has Mali parts. So a big OE supplier. Right, and of course, now that expertise is brought into the aftermarket. In addition to you know, the parts that you mentioned, I know they're also involved with tooling. You know, they've got uh, the, the uh, equipment. Uh, excuse me, the air conditioning equipment, uh, yep. fluid change, and then here recently at Apex, they uh, uh, unveiled a brand new scan tool platform as well. Yeah, matter of fact, they're doing the finishing touches on that scan tool about a hundred feet from where I'm sitting right now talking to you, in efforts to have that thing on the market for the big three. Uh, covering the big three sometime this spring. So a really cool looking tool. If you saw it out at Apex, the neat thing about it was it'll gather the information in less than a minute. So oh, really quick, fast enough you can scan every vehicle that comes in your shop. Yeah. Yeah. So with that background, guys, I mean it's pretty obvious that that Molly is, is knows what they're talking about. They've been doing it a very long time. And uh, Bill, not today Bill, but he's been doing it a very long time. He's been yeah, a matter of fact, 34 years this year, Pete, I've been at this. So uh, Molly's been around since the early 1920s, but I've been on board for 34 years, so quite a while. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of expertise there as well. Which leads us right into the next topic then, Bill. Last time we spoke, uh, you told me that, man, you just really had to get out some information on the Molly Eco Filter. Yes. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with that. Give us some background on the on the Molly Eco Filter and why you felt so passionate about getting that information out. Well, and it's a good story. Uh, most everybody's familiar with this style filter here, spin on right. style filter that we have used. Most of us, your age and my age, we've grown up with this filter. Some sure. of us are old enough we can remember when there was a canister with a cartridge inside of it. But most of us, the spin on filter is all we remember. Right. What's going on now in the OE side of our business is we're moving back to that insert that we were familiar with from the 1950s where we have a cartridge inside of a canister. We take the canister off the vehicle, we replace the cartridge and put it back together and away we go. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about it is these filters that we're talking about now, if you examine them carefully like this one I'm holding, this happens to be the OE filter for the Hyundai Santa Fe. There's no metal in this filter whatsoever. It's paper and plastic. So what we can do, and this is really important, you know, in the worldwide uh, overview, 
is we can crush this used filter down, squeeze all the oil out of it that we can get, and then we can incinerate the rest of it. Mm. Everything here will burn and incinerate. So we're not filling landfills worldwide with millions of metal canisters, you know, which take years to disintegrate. Not to mention the fact we can get a lot more oil out of this cartridge filter than we can this canister filter when we crush it. So Hyundai Santa Fe, here's a cute little Fiat filter. Same way if you can see here, and I spin it around and you'll see really no metal whatsoever on this filter, just plastic and paper. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool. Now I do want to caution you, not every insert cartridge style filter is an eco filter. If you look here, let's see, get my finger right here. This is a metal crimp right here that crimps the paper when they yeah. put it together, keeps it from leaking. Well that does not allow it to be crushed and incinerated. So you'll notice what's happened is the technology on these new filters is, you get this rotated, there we go, is the bond is strictly glue. We've left the little metal clamp off. That way we can incinerate the filter. We can do it either way, but as we go along and this becomes more and more important that we build stuff that protects the environment, you know, we change our manufacturing. Matter of fact, another cool story is we don't think much about it, but this is an air filter. Mm -hmm. Happens for a Mercedes Benz, but you'll notice there's no metal screen back here. Mm -hmm. so we had for years we put metal screens on air filters to reinforce them as we draw lots of air in. But again, that metal screen means I can't incinerate it, can't crush it down and incinerate it and dispose of it. So even on air filters, we're looking now with a green outlook and a green eye. How can we manufacture a filter that's more environmentally friendly? So that's where we're coming from on the eco filter thing. It's really that simple, Pete. Yeah, would, is that something unique to, to Molly? No, it's not unique to Molly. Other OE manufacturers are, are going that way. And of course, even though we supply about 300 new vehicles every year on the OE side, we can't yeah. supply them all. We'd love to, but we can't sure. supply them all. So other OE filter manufacturers are being called on to produce eco filters also. Now, what I wanted to caution you on is uh, this is probably a better example because it's been out a couple of years, this little Fiat filter. There are certainly other suppliers of this filter out here now besides Molly. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean just because they supply a filter that will fit in its place that it's eco friendly. Mm -hmm. So you, the installer, need to be careful you know, on the filter you buy and say, well, yeah, it fits in there and it's only $2, but you need to look it over. Is there metal in here? Is there steel somewhere? Because if it is, you're doing an injustice to your uh, consumer, you know, the person that owns that vehicle, and what you put back on it. So that would be the caution. Yeah. Well, I think too that there's uh, no matter what side of the fence you stand on when it comes to impacts on the environment. I think we're all can agree that anything we can do that minimizes that impact in a good way is certainly worth worth doing. And a lot of customers are, are very eco conscious now. That's a great point that you could bring up as a shop owner or technician. You know that the products you're using to service the car are, as you said, eco-friendly, that they can be totally disposed of and they're not going to impact the environment. Yeah, I think it is a good pitch. And, you know, it's as simple as having one of those filters sitting on the counter where you do the work orders and say, hey, by the way, Pete, did you know that your vehicle uses an eco-oil filter? Let me show you what I'm talking about. And you whip up your sample, give them the 30-second pitch that I just gave you, and it's that simple. And I have to ask another question of you, Bill, that I'm sure a lot of techs are going to wonder. I mean, you pointed out that the, the, the where the streams join on the cartridge you know, uh -huh. is bonded rather than using the metal uh, to make it eco-friendly, and then the lack of screen on the air filter, for example, to make it eco-friendly. How does this impact its durability, though? It, uh, what make, makes sure that it stays as strong as the previous design? Well, there you're trusting us, your engineering partner. And I might add, I told you just a minute ago, we're OE on about 300 vehicles a year, European, U.S., and Asian. We manufacture about $1.5 billion worth of filters a year. So, you know, we're a big player in this business. And you're trusting us and our German engineering and our expertise to supply you back a filter that not only will fit the vehicle, but it will fit it like it was intended at the OE level. Sure, I mean, that's... Goes without saying, a company like Molly, that that uh, again, as you said earlier, half the cars in production that today are, are going to be fitted with some model part somewhere. Uh, Absolutely, they have that expertise. So our deal is too, 
that uh, we don't make a cheaper filter for the aftermarket. If this is the OE piece for this particular Hyundai, mm -hmm. this is the filter you'll have in your box from us. We awesome. don't go off and do a knockoff, you know, for the aftermarket. We right. supply the same filter. Yeah, that's a that's another common issue that a lot of techs, you know, tell us about. Even I, you know, was still wrenching for a living. You know, was that the same part in the box that uh, that the OE got? So that that takes that out. Of, uh, yeah. We're pretty proud of that because there's a lot of what we call in the business will fits out there. Sure. You know, somebody copied it and it will fit. Doesn't mean it's engineered the same. Doesn't mean it filters the same. Right. It's a will fit part. Right. Awesome. And the last question I want to ask you, Bill, the push for the eco filters, does that come from uh, from your end, or was that something that the OEMs uh, initiated the task on, challenged you with that task? I think it was a joint deal. We have OEM buyers who are saying, man, we really like, you know, to do what we can for the environment. Us saying, you know, we've got the technology today to build a filter that requires no metal in it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It'll filter just as well for you. It'll function just as well but we can crush it and incinerate it. So it was kind of a joint effort. And it started, frankly, started in Europe first and then trickled down into Asia. Sure. Now we're doing that in the U.S. as well on, on our OE business. Sure. Yeah, a lot of the eco-friendly things seem to, to work that, that circle, you know, starting over the EU and then, and then working its way down. Yeah, and, you know, if you've been to Europe, it's so compact there. You know, there are so many millions of people crowded into a small space. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of room for landfills, you know. Not right. the wide open spaces that we're used to here in the U.S. Right. So you see how the impact of going green there, you know, it's an immediate hit in Europe, and now it's trickling down to the U.S. market. Sure. Uh, so, of course, then I guess those who are watching, they can ask their local jobbers, parts houses, you know, for the Mala brand and, and the yep. EcoFilter you know, brand. Um, and if they want more information about Mala aftermarket, period, here in the U.S., uh, where can people go? molly-aftermarket.com and if you have a specific question uh, there is a spot there on the home page says need help and click on that and you have a direct dialogue to me I answer those every day and so if it's a part number you're looking for or for information on anything just click on need help and you're talking to Bill Wow that's that's personal service much more yes, sir. can't get much more than that right so yep, I do them every morning every day <laughs> so. Thanks so much for uh, for hanging out with me this afternoon, sharing the, the news about uh, Mala and uh, the EcoFilter and all the rest. Uh, very interesting, and I'm sure a lot of the guys watching will want to take advantage of it. Our pleasure, Pete. Thank you.